Oh, yeah. Amazing, thanks. Okay, um, okay. So uh, this project is part of a bigger project at the University of Antwerp called Catch 2020. Uh, Catch 2020 is short for Computer Assisted Transcription of Complex Handwriting. Um, and in this project, we're looking at new or, or alternative ways to uh, work with complex modern manuscripts because currently, um, oftentimes, the workflow to work with these manuscripts um, relies on an HDR workflow, which I think uh, most of you are familiar with. So this workflow consists of training or fine-tuning a model on your own handwriting and then using this fine-tuned or trained model to transcribe your manuscripts that you want to work with, and then you can use these transcriptions in more downstream tasks. However, this um, workflow introduces at least two bottlenecks into your project. First of all, the quality and the amount of your, both of the scans of your manuscripts, as well as the uh, quality and amount of the transcriptions of your training data matter quite a lot in how well uh, the transcriptions will be. And uh, secondly, if you want to introduce a new handwriting into your data set, you have to uh, start the process of training or fine-tuning a model um, all over again. So this is labor-intensive, even for trained expens uh, yeah, expensive domain experts. So today I'll be proposing CLIP as a possible solution for this problem. Uh, so first of all, what is CLIP? CLIP is a multimodal model, so this means that the model can handle uh, different model modalities at once. Uh, for CLIP, this is images and text. Uh, so the idea behind CLIP is that you have two transformers, one image transformer and one text transformer, and these two transformers are jointly trained. So that means that the image transformer will uh, embed an image, the text transformer will, will embed a text embedding, and they will project it into the same semantic space, and the idea is to make the image embedding and the text embedding to be as close to one another as possible. Uh, the distance is measured using cosine distance. Uh, Clip is pre-trained on quite a large uh, data set already, so it can be used for um, a wide variety of different tasks without the need to fine-tune it to the specific task first. Um, using Clip for, or using a model for data that it hasn't seen during training is called zero shot. Um, so in this paper, I will be talking about using Clip for reading um, handwritten text, so the ideas that I feed a handwritten word into the clip model as well as the transcription of the uh, words. So as you can see here on the left, you have a handwritten, you have an image of the handwritten word journey. On the left, you can see um, the text that I feed into the model. So it's a prompt with the transcription. The prompt is a picture of the written word, and then the transcription is journey. Uh, these two uh, data inputs will be embedded using clip and then the if the cosine distance between these two created embeddings is close to one another, the image and the text are paired together. Um, so if I want to do this, the question arises, can Clip actually read text? Uh, Clip is, as I said before, not, uh, not pre-trained on, uh, on the data set specifically meant as handwritten data. Um, it has seen MNIST, which contains um, handwritten digits, but not handwritten words. However, OpenAI, the company behind Clip, already hinted at um, Clip's ability to read text when they uh, wrote a paper on typographic attacks. And I'll be reading from the slide to make sure I have it right. But they said that by explo exploiting the model's ability to read text robustly, we find that even photographs of handwritten text can often fool the model. Now, what does this mean specifically? Um, you can see it on the image down below. On the um, left, you can see a picture of an apple, so this picture will be embedded using clip. On the right, you can see a couple of words, which will also be embedded using the model clip. And um, for these different text embeddings, um, the distance will be measured to the embedding of the image. And the closest, yeah, and then on the um, right, you can see how well these text embeddings match the image embedding. And as you can see, it's the embedding of Granny Smith that matches the image embedding the best. Now, on the right, you can see that to the image of the um, apple, they added a paper with the word iPod written on it, and now it's no longer the word Granny Smith that matches the image the best, it's the word, uh, it's the text embedding of the word iPod that matches the image the best. So this already hints at um, the fact that Clip actually sometimes confuses the written concept of words with the, um, like, with the object itself, so yeah, 
Uh, so I assess uh, Clip's ability to perform zero-shot keyword spotting. I did this using the IM data set. The data set contains handwriting of over 600 uh, different authors. Uh, so it makes a different case study for us in the humanities because a lot of manuscripts just contain a lot of different handwritings. Um, I use uh, a bit over 40,000 different images. Um, so the idea, again, is that I embed all the images in the data set as well as all the tra transcriptions in the data set and I map the most similar text embedding to the, the text embedding and the image embedding that are most similar to one another. Um, now this gave me an F1 score of 16.55%. Uh, again, this is the clip uh, model which hasn't been fine-tuned on any handwritten words. Um, next, I wanted to um, see how well the image embeddings created by the clip model actually are. So I uh, performed a simple logistic regression using the image embeddings created by clip as the input uh, for the model. This gave me an F1 score of 10.94%. For So from this, I concluded that the multimodal model actually captured information that was beneficial for the task of zero-shot keyword spotting, so to map the correct words to the correct image. Um, the next step, what I'm doing right now, is I'm actually fine-tuning the model. So uh, for this, I'm using triplet loss. For triplet loss, um, I make use of triplets. So triplets uh, consist of an anchor, a positive match, and a negative match. The anchor is the image of the word, which you can see in the blue. Uh, thingy. Um, the negative thing, uh, the negative match is a transcription that doesn't match the image, and the positive match is a transcription that actually does match the uh, image. And the goal in the fine tuning is to make the Im the text embedding of the positive match more similar to the anchor, while making the um, text embedding of the negative match more dissimilar to the anchor. Um, currently. To collect the negative matches, I'm just randomly sampling from my data. Um, so to conclude from all this, um, my initial results are quite modest, 16.55%. However, again, this is an out-of-the-box model which has never been trained on a specific handwritten hand uh, data set before. So it can already suggest that clip could be useful in um, going from a digitized manuscript not yet readable by the computer to actually making uh, it accessible for a computer. Um, however, I should also acknowledge some limitations of this um, process. Uh, first of all, CLIP is not made to handle sequential data, so it can be used for classification tasks such as my keyword spotting, but it won't be able to transcribe your manuscript. Um, secondly, it's quite a large model to perform quite a small task, so some people might say you're using a bazooka to kill a mosquito. Um, and then thirdly, um, in order to actually do the keyword spotting, you um, first need to segment your manuscript into the individual words, which of course in and of itself is already a challenge in um, working with manuscript manuscripts and a, a challenge which I haven't even touched upon in this uh, research. Thank you for your attention.